Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Melissa. I am the owner and artist here at the Top Drawer RVA located in Richmond, Virginia, and I'm also a Dixie Belle brand ambassador. Today's project is this terribly damaged but still very beautiful dresser. We are going to jump right in and start to do some veneer repair and some wood repair before we get ready for paint. I feel like I can save this veneer and not peel it off and have to replace it all with mud. So I'm going to get out a syringe and wood glue. And what's going to happen is I'm going to take that wood glue and insert it underneath the actual piece of veneer. So the plan is to put the wood glue inside the syringe. Take the needle part of the syringe and insert it up and underneath the bubbling veneer. When you see the veneer bubbling like it is, that means that there is glue or something underneath that has lost its sticky value. So I took off the hardware for the piece and cleaned it very well with white lightning and then got my syringe ready. Fun fact of the day, did you know that I was actually a nurse before I became a furniture painter? Crazy. So let's put those nursing skills to the test and start to insert the glue under every single bubble that I find. So you stick that little needle up and under and insert as much glue as you can before it starts to kind of spill out on the sides. What this is gonna do then is fill the space where you can clamp it or put your dresser drawer down flat and lay something very heavy on it just to get that glue to reattach the veneer to the actual piece of wood that's on the drawer front. It was funny because once I started doing this, I found a lot more places where the veneer had lifted than I had originally thought. My game plan was to do this and make it a quick repair job, but stay tuned because this actually turned into a giant hot mess. So since the plan was to put the glue in and clamp it to hold it flat, what ended up happening was it didn't work. <laughs> I've never done this on a serpentine dresser before. So here I am filling in the top drawers because they did have missing veneer while the bottom drawers were drying. Little did I know my plan failed miserably. So since my drawers were not flat and they were serpentine style, what ended up happening was the glue wasn't able to be pushed in and down far enough with the veneer. So normally I would take like heavy weighted things and push it down on the veneer and it would then reattach itself. But because of the curved surface, it was kind of impossible and uh, I ended up quitting. So I peeled off all of the veneer pretty much on one drawer and half of the veneer on the other. Which meant that I ended up using a whole container of Dixie Belle's mud to fix and repair this dresser. I did have one small spot on the top where there was like a, an old repair done. I did fill that in with mud. Don't worry, we're going to stain over top of that. So what is Dixie Belle's mud? Mud is a kind of a thick pudding that you can put onto anywhere where your wood might have missing parts of veneer or chips. And when it dries, you can sand it back to completely flat. So this is what I had to do. Fill in that entire drawer because it was rough and sticky and ew. So filling in that entire drawer with mud and waiting for it to dry took a whole another day. So this project ended up taking more days than I wanted to. But like all things, you need to wait for the good stuff, right? Part of this prep did include Bonding Boss as well. If you haven't heard about Bonding Boss, this is a new product. We used to have a product called Slick Stick, which is an adhesion primer. And then we'd also have Boss, which is a product that you would use to block any stains or bleed through from coming into your piece. You can see here that this is gray Bonding Boss. Bonding Boss is actually a combination of both of those things, Slick Stick and regular Boss. Whenever I use a lot of mud for repair on a piece, I always seal it with boss before I begin. Um, so using this new bonding boss is actually two birds, one stone, because I'm also going to prevent any bleed through on the piece as well as any adhesion issues I might have. But protecting that fresh new mud, even though it's dry, is kind of an important step that I don't want you to skip. So anywhere where you repair with mud, you should probably seal it with boss. 
And just because this is a new product, I'm going to fill you in on some of the details for usage of Bonding Boss. It's the same as the Slick Stick rules used to be. You're going to need to wait 24 hours after you apply your boss before you begin to paint. Because this is your Bonding Boss, your Slick Stick, and your boss in one, it's an essential step in the process. So make sure you wait 24 hours before you paint. So the thought process in my head is, even though the mud is going to be fairly smooth, it's definitely not going to be perfect. I'm going to be using a decoupage paper over top of these two drawers to hide any of the flaws. You can see me here sanding back that mud to completely flat. It actually turned out pretty good, but it definitely needed a coat of bonding boss to make sure that it was locked in and sealed before paint. Phew, that was a lot, right? Like that was like three days of prep just to get this dresser to the point where I could get ready to paint it. It felt like forever. I will be applying this decoupage paper called the Lovely Sonnet over top of each drawer. So since I want a nice neutral background for that paper, I painted on one even coat of cucumber ice. I then used one paper for each drawer, breaking it up in the middle and joining it back together. Now listen, I am not the master of decoupage, but I made this work. I like to use a piece of saran wrap to push it out and really minimize the wrinkles. And to adhere that paper to the piece, I use satin clear coat to brush on, put your paper down and brush on again. So now I'm going to take my gel stain and clean up the top of this piece. To be honest, if it wasn't for that repair at the back where I had to use mud in that small section, I probably would have left it as is. It was in really good shape. I think somebody had refinished it at one point. So the plan is to wipe on this gel stain in espresso to cover the repair that I made with the mud. You can see that in the bottom left hand corner. And then once it dries, I can seal this with either Terra Tough Top Coat or Gator Hide. I like both of those top coats for the shine that it gives me. Gel Stain is an oil-based product. You're going to want to wear gloves. I like to wipe this on lightly and build up my coverage in the direction of the wood grain. I also did the two front feet to darken them up and make them match the top. This dresser is actually a really pretty piece. I love all the small details and it's always a favorite when it can match the feet to the top of a dresser. Once this dries, like I said, you can seal it with gator hide or clear coat, it's up to you. One more small detail before we jump into the paint. I want to add these little moldings. These are actually would you bend moldings. You can find would you bend under tools on the Dixie Belle paint page. They're really cool to kind of dress up the front of a piece and I use these little keyholes quite often. If you've never used Would You Bend moldings before, don't be afraid because they're super duper simple. They arrive rigid and hard in their packaging, but they're actually made from a real wood product. So what you're gonna do is flip them upside down like you see me doing here, and you're going to use a heat source, whether it be a heat gun or a hair dryer, to heat them up. What that does is makes them bendy. Even though they look flat, I'm putting them on a curved surface. So making them bendy is going to let me adhere them very well to the front of this piece. You need to use wood glue when you adhere them to your projects. It's very simple, just apply your wood glue, put your wood you bend onto your project, and then heat them one more time. That extra little heating after you've put them down, make sure that they are nice and flush to the front of your piece. And finally, finally, like three days later, I am ready for paint. Wouldn't it be great if we could just jump in and start painting right away? But you know, I find these pieces, this one's actually given to me for free. I find these pieces on the side of the road sometimes. So I always have a lot of prep work before I begin to paint. Today's project is going to be all about Terra. Terra is my favorite paint to use for texture. So since this piece is a little bit beat up, what's gonna happen is putting this paint down is going to give me a textured surface. When you pounce the paint on in this manner, what happens is it keeps that little peaked and kind of peaks and valleys in your paint. So it gives you texture where there was none before, which is perfect for hiding any damages. 
The colors that you see me using here are Prairie Dawn and Wheat. I want to get kind of a yellowy base coat. And once that first coat gets dry, you can use a heat gun if you want to dry it faster. I'm going to move into a little bit more color. We're going to use Marigold and Bougainvillea as well. If you've never tried clay paint before and you're wondering why I prefer it over chalk mineral paint for texture, the clay paint is thicker. It's a lot like pudding. It would be great if you could grab like one of the little four ounce sizes that they have available and practice with two like-minded colors because what you're going to find is that these paints blend so easily together and you don't need a fancy pants brush. You can do this with a chip brush. The brush that I'm using for this project is my French tip. So the clay paint goes on thick and it stays on thick, which is why you see me pushing it rather than spreading it out thinly. I want texture on this piece. I want peaks and valleys. I want to add a lot of wax at the end to really age it up and make it look super romantic and old. So applying the paint in this way, which I guarantee anybody can do. This is not hard to do. I mean, a two-year-old could pounce paint on in this manner. You're going to find that using water helps you really blend these colors simply. So I'm starting to add a little bit more color to my piece in the corners, giving it a little bit more depth. That bougainvillea and the marigold, the orange and kind of pinkish tones to really age it up and kind of make it look a little bit more worn out. So all the corners got a little dark, the keyholes got a little dark, and then when you spray it, you can drip it and run it and give it a super duper boho look. I also did this on the edges of the drawers and then at the end of the day I ended up doing gilding wax. Surprise, changed my mind again. But I dripped my paint and I ran my paint down the front of the decoupage paper and then I did the same process to the sides of the piece as well. When you seal your terra clay paint, you need to kind of remember that this paint does get reactivated by water. So you need to have a light hand. I ended up sealing the entire base with terra matte which is a nice flat sealant and then I use waxes over top to accent the edges. I used my gold gilding wax instead of paint because I didn't want my drawers to rub together and be any thicker than they had to be. You know that these old dressers never really sit completely flat so adding that gilding wax on the edges of all the drawers to hide any of my paint marks was super helpful. I used my waxes on top of this sealed piece to give it some age and depth and you can really see the texture now with that beautiful terra paint. I really like the vintagey vibes that this piece is giving. That decoupage paper looks super great, it covers up any of the damages and that terra clay paint has the most beautiful texture. Those little would you bang keyholes added the perfect touch. I put back on the original hardware and I gilled all of my edges with gold. What do you think of this beauty? Can you believe that I got this piece for free? I hope that you love this Vintage Vibes makeover as much as I do. It definitely was a process to get it to the point where it looked this good, but if I can do it, you can do it too.